Okay, today we're going to start looking at horizontal projectile motion. So what's different about these kind of questions are that we've got two dimensions going on. We've got motion that's moving um, vertically and horizontally. So the kind of questions we're going to start with are a little bit easier, where we have something getting sh thrown off a hill or a cliff or a car going off a cliff or a top of a building or anything like that. So let's suppose we have an object and we're going to throw it 8 meters per second horizontally off the top of a cliff. So the first thing we have to make sure we're aware of is what is that path of the object going to be. Because it's moving horizontally, it's not just going to go falling straight down off a cliff, right? It's going to, that horizontal speed is going to make it go outwards, but then gravity is going to start to pull this thing down faster and faster. So it should follow a path something like that. Okay? One thing you got to be careful of and make sure you're aware of is that speed of 8 meters per second horizontally stays constant. We've got nothing slowing that ball down. Once it's in midair, other than wind resistance, which we'll ignore, there's nothing that's causing that ball to stop. Until it hits the ground and it makes contact with the ground, that's the only time it'll actually stop. So that 8 meters per, per, per second is going to stay exactly the same all the way through the entire trip. So remember the horizontal velocity is constant. It's going to be the same all the way through and because it's constant we can just use our EZ velocity equals distance over time formula. The vertical information though is going to be a little bit more difficult because initially when that ball is on the cliff it has a velocity, initial velocity of zero. But as, it, as soon as it leaves the cliff gravity is going to start pulling that thing down. So its velocity is going to be at whatever size there and further on it's going to get bigger and by the time it hits the ground it's going to be as big as it can be due to gravity acting on it longer and longer and causing it to speed up vertically. So our horizontal speed will be the same, our vertical velocity will change so basically our vertical information is accelerating So because of acceleration, we then have to use all the tougher formulas when we're dealing with uh, vertical stuff. So we're going to be dealing with all of our older formulas that we did with acceleration. So we got, for these kind of questions, often you'll be given the vertical height or the distance. Sometimes you'll be given the horizontal or be looking for that. So we basically have the two distances, the vertical and the horizontal distance, quite often are being asked for. Other times they're going to ask for speeds, and I might ask for the final vertical velocity. Maybe it'll ask for the total velocity at the very end. Um, and that's about it. The only other thing that sometimes doesn't get asked but is often implied is how long did this take? What is the time it's going to take? And for that, you've got to remember that time is the only thing that links the horizontal and vertical information together. So the time it takes that ball to fall straight to the ground is going to be the exact same time it takes for it to follow any kind of path. Because acceleration is constant on that object, the time is going to be the same. The time it'll take will never change depending on the path. It's just the acceleration that's causing it to, to speed up. So the time will always be the same. So when we're doing questions, quite often what you're going to have to do is separate. You're going to have to separate the information that you want to be able to to solve for it properly. So one good thing to be aware of is when you're dealing with these questions is make sure you know how to separate the vertical and the horizontal information. So let's do an example. Let's suppose we're going 8 meters per second off the cliff and we're going to be falling 15 meters. So the height of the cliff is 15 meters. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. So what you want to be able to do then is um, separate the information. So vertically we know it has a height of initial velocity of zero. It's still on the cliff so it's not falling yet. We know it's going to fall 15 meters. We have a negative 15 and we know the acceleration of gravity is going to be 9.81 downwards. We don't know what its final velocity will be when it hits the ground and we also don't know what the time is going to be. Okay. Horizontally So for horizontal information, we know its constant velocity is 8. We don't know the time, and we don't know how far it's going to travel. 
Okay, but we do only thing we know is that it's going to be 8 meters per second and it's going to be constant. So let's solve a few of these questions at once. So the first part, quite often, you're going to have to solve for is time because time is the only thing that's the same for both. You're either going to have to be given the time or you're going to need to solve for it. So in part A, let's solve for the time. So we're going to use vertical information because we don't have enough information given in horizontally. So we're going to use our initial velocity of 0, our distance of negative 15, our acceleration of 9.81, plug that into the VIT plus 1 half AT squared formula, and you can see here I, I calculated 1.75 seconds. Okay, so now part B, now that we have that, we know that our time is 1.75, we can indeed now actually solve for our horizontal distance. So because for that part it's, uh, it's constant speed, the distance is quite easy to solve for because all we have to do is go distance divided by time to get our velocity. So therefore our distance will be velocity times time. So we would have 8 times 1.75 and that gives us an answer of 14 meters once we round it. Okay, so we'll have our horizontal distance of 14 meters. So that's pretty much all we could find so far horizontally, that's all we need. The only other thing we got left to solve for would be maybe the final velocity of that object when it hits the ground. So we've got to go back to our vertical information. So let me erase this. So if we go back to our vertical information, we can solve for final velocity. And let's try not to use the, the time, but we could, but let's try not to. So in order to find final velocity, we can use the VF squared formula, plug everything in, so our final velocity, VI is zero, so that's gone. So we'd have 2 times 9.81 times our distance of negative 15, and we could plug all that into the formula, square root our answer, and we get approximately 17.2 meters per second. Okay. So because that object is going to be following this path, we know that it's going to be moving downward. So technically, we'd say our final velocity is negative 17.2 because it's going to be pointing straight down. Okay. One thing you got to be careful of is if it's asking for final velocity, we're done. But if the question asks for what is its actual velocity and angle when it hits the ground, we've got to be a little bit careful because we know it's going downwards at 17.2, but we also know it was going horizontally to start with at 8, so we actually, the, the realistic path of the ball is going to be coming downwards at an angle and hitting the ground at an angle. So its actual speed will be a little bit faster and it's going to be approaching at some sort of angle. So we can actually solve for those using vectors. So basically here's what I got the calculation, we got 17.2 down, 8 going horizontally, find your hypotenuse, we get an answer of 19 find the angle, we get an answer of 25 degrees, so technically our final velocity of that ball is 19 meters per second at south 25 east. So you can see with these questions we kind of tie everything we've done so far. We got acceleration, we got vectors, we got a little bit of everything. So that's it for this. Um, we're going to do a bit of practice on this and then we'll be looking at angled vector problems, angle, angled projectiles. And they change a little bit, but it's the important thing to remember is we've got horizontal motion that's constant, vertical motion that's accelerating. You have to make sure you solve for each separately, and time is the only thing that connects the two. So quite often you're going to need the time, or you're going to have to solve for it first thing before you can do anything else. And that's all.